Hey everyone, welcome to Whiteboard Friday, and today we're going to be talking about the role of a tester in the Agile STLC, and we're going to do a series on this, but today what we really want to focus on is the value of that tester um, in an Agile STLC. Um, as you know, you know, from if you think about traditional waterfall type testing moving to Agile, um, there's been a shift in thinking about what testing and where testing should be involved in that SDLC. Traditionally, as you know from a, a waterfall methodology, you've got different stages, almost like an assembly line, where the, the product or the code is being kind of passed to these different stages here. And testing is really done at the end. Um, that's going to be like a three-month period, a six-month period, you know, traditionally a longer time. And what they've done with Agile is that since that these are all siloed operations that could occur, no collaborations in place. And so what Agile did is it basically took uh, these same these same things that you're going to need to do it you need to do in all STLCs and broken them out into smaller iterations. And this is something that uh, you know obviously is is some very well known between Waterfall and Agile. But what really occurs is that it becomes you know, not just a siloed operation that's going on in Waterfall, it becomes more of a collaborative piece, and that also involves testing. And so what testing has done is it shifted from not just being one person doing it, but everyone's involved with testing. If you think about um, a slogan that a lot of CEOs say in their corporations, they say, you know, everyone is selling, right? Everyone has a responsibility to sell in the organization, no matter what area you are in that uh, organization. The same thing with testing. It's, it's kind of moved up into saying, you know, everyone is testing now, and that's kind of put some, uh, you know, some some questions around. Well, what happens to the role of that traditional tester? Since everyone is testing, do they still have value? And, and the answer is yes. Testers still definitely have value, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Because uh, developers, product owners, testers, they have, they have all different types of different personas. Um, and to say that you know, they are not needed in this uh, SDLC is, uh, in our minds, uh, something that could be very over, much overlooked and uh, could, could be a detriment to the actual finished product because testers really do have a, a heartbeat on what the, t the, the end user needs. And so we're going to be talking about some of those values that the tester adds. And in, in, in future series, we'll be talking about more specifically how they contribute in the overall SDLC in, in their role. So one of the first things that testers do is that they are the voice of the customer. Um, you know, as the product owner and developer are talking and, and tester are really talking with the stakeholder on what they actually need for their business, um, the tester is really to be the voice of that customer because they've tested stuff in the past that ultimately got delivered to that customer. And they're bringing stuff um, uh, to the product owner, to the uh, to, to the uh, uh, stakeholder to say, hey, these are things we found in the past. These are some issues that we've encountered with uh, previous versions. And some of those things may or may not have been included in the backlog when we actually go through that grooming phase. And so what the tester is trying to do is be the voice of that customer um, because as they're testing in the organization, they are putting on that customer-facing hat um, and acting as that end user. The next thing is that testers add focus. So if you think about if testers weren't in this uh, you know, very quick uh, agile uh, SDLC that happens, you know, typically in, in two week sprints. Um, and the developers were just going off and coding stuff and doing maybe some of their unit testing and then pushing it out into production. Uh, what could happen is that they're not really staying true to that user story that may have been uh, uh, may have been created for that finished product. And so what the testers are doing is they're trying to get uh, add focus back to what the developers are developing. If they're getting off the rails a little bit, testers can bring them in and say, hey, listen, I tested this area of the application. This is the code that you just pushed out. Well, that really doesn't map back to what this user story is clearly defining of what needs to occur. And so again, the testers are trying to add focus to uh, the development that's going on, and they, they're giving that feedback rapidly versus giving it at the end of the cycle that you would with a traditional waterfall uh, method. The next thing is that testers facilitate early clarification of software expectations. And, and we've been talking a lot about uh, BDD in the past and exploratory testing methods and previous Whiteboard Fridays. Uh, this also could revolve around a BDD type of approach, which is you know, you're trying to discover that value and bring clarification to what the stakeholder wants and give a perspective that the product owner uh, may not be seeing when you maybe do your three amigos uh, type of session. So being able to facilitate early clarifications of software expectations, that's something that is going to be adding to the, the overall value of the user story or the feature that you're developing. And also what testers are doing is that 
and also setting expectations of, of what they of what the tester is going to be testing in their, uh, their, their testing cycles. And what I mean by that is the fact that uh, if they've seen things in the past, if they've seen errors that have come up when a, you know, a, a previous build had happened, and that was not incorporated into the new build or the new product feature backlog, right? They can bring that up and say that, you know, we're really expecting the behavior to uh, do A when you're kind of coding it or you're kind of saying it to be B. And so we're trying to bring, we're trying to bring about um, any expectations, any risks, any issues that could occur uh, with a user story or with a feature that we're coding against based off of our prior experience and the testing that we've gone on. The next thing is that testers are always testing. If you think about uh, fluorescent lights, and it took me a while to say that word. I was actually practicing how to say that word before we got in here today. But as you walk into a building, right, usually these are always on. And the reason why they're always on is because it's, you know, costs less money to have them on. But really, uh, you know, they're always on. And, and, and with testing, we're always on as well. Testers are always having the mindset of testing. This is why uh, you know, sometimes people don't like testers because we're always nitpicky about certain things or uh, we're always having that outlook that is uh, you know, maybe worst case scenario or thinking about things that aren't necessarily in that happy path flow, uh, things that could break the system. And we're always testing that and always having that mindset on, whereas uh, developers or product owners could be zeroed in and focused on just testing um, and, and co or coding uh, uh, to a specification without including uh, any of these possible examples that could occur with a, a defect break or uh, a scenario that we didn't think about earlier. And an example of this is uh, always being testing. I was a tester previously um, uh, in my uh, career before I came to QA Symphony. And I actually am a full-time tester, um, and you know that testing mindset still doesn't go away today. Um, you know, I I was actually you know, part of the rollout of our new website recently, and even though we've got a stable website and it's it's rocking and rolling now, um, there was little things here and there that I would find and give back to the the marketing team uh, that they didn't even think about doing some exploratory testing, session-based type testing where. Uh, finding issues there. So even though that's not even part of my job description here, uh, I couldn't help but go off and start testing certain areas of our own applications. Um, the other thing is that testers find bugs early and they, they fix them fast, right? So if, if they hadn't had uh, driven focus to the development team and make sure they're on track for development and didn't test during those iterations of the development phases, right, to help uh, with those developers, um, then you know you'd really be following an approach where they'd only test at the very end, uh, or there'd be there would be bugs released into production that were never tested by you would say a traditional software tester. Uh, and so what the the agile testing cycle allows you to do is have a dedicated tester that allows them to find bugs early and fix them uh, in iterations, rather than kind of co coming at the end of that waterfall uh, uh, method uh, to where you could have. Lots of defects being produced out to the end user that never really had uh, some formal testing eyes on it. And then lastly is that testing ensures that regression testing is a continual process. And so not just focusing on the manual aspect and exploratory testing aspect, but really getting involved with the automation piece. And, and uh, the, what, what uh, testers could really do is monitor that regression that's happening, and, and, and hopefully this is being an automated fashion, that's happening either prior to a build or after a build. Um, so that you know, we're making you know, all the green light on regression testing is going good, and then we can focus on actually focusing on those new feature type testing that is being rolled out in that sprint. And so you know, we want to be able to monitor the regression testing. We can, testers can take on that role and provide feedback and make sure that you know, nothing is, in the core system is broken uh, during that. And also making sure that regression testing is a continual process going forward. So it's not just we keep the same old scripts that we've had uh, you know, back in um, you know a couple months ago, that uh, you know, we keep running over and over again that are passing. We're adding to that library. We're adding to uh, either at the the unit level or the functional level for automation, so that we can easily kick these off uh, and, and monitor that, give feedback that everything's good to go before we actually focus on our new feature testing, and provide feedback there. So. These are just some of the values that the tester does add. And again, it's, it's not just the, the tester, and the developer, the product owner. We're all testing um, in, in the same SDLC for, for Agile. We're all taking on that uh, tester's role. And, and sometimes 
uh, what's happening is the tester's role, developer role, and also the product owner role, they're blurring in um, you know, what, uh, uh, what advice they can give in, in, in all stages of, of this um, uh, agile development phase. So uh, really, uh, we've seen a lot of different uh, arenas where Tetra can add value. These are just, uh, I guess, six of them. Lots of other ones we could talk about. Uh, but we're going to continue our conversation uh, next week on you know, what more, where does the tester really fit in that Agile uh, SDLC? What type of testing are they doing in that SDLC and, and really driving home the, the real uh, value and need for an actual tester there? So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.